since you were a kid. I could blow my knee out, both knees, and still kick your ass. <laughs> we're trying to find the Robbie Homo statue. I wanted to kill you. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Another episode of Goodman and Homo podcast. Uh, make sure you follow us. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you uh, send all your complaints, whatever. Uh, Rob, good to see you. Look what I got in the mail uh, yep. over the weekend. Look at this. I, I, I heard found that, one. I saw, I, you did. You did. Congrats. Um, I heard via Twitter yeah. or X or whatever they call it now uh, that you could have also purchased the shorts and and declined. That's true. That's true. I, I, that wasn't part of our deal. I no, I hear you, but I I thought they were throwing them in for a pretty good deal, so yeah. I, I'm surprised you didn't pull the trigger on that. That was, uh... but I do look forward. I hope you've been I hope you've been toning the biceps, and I hope that you haven't just been eating your face off in Charleston and not working out, which we know you've not been doing. No, I'm back in Boston. I'm back. No, in I Boston. know, but I I know that it's been it's been six weeks right. of just not working out, or however long you're there. Were you there for two months or three months or Seven however weeks. long you vacationed for? Seven weeks. And yeah, so you're you right. Start, you it start getting not, on it. It was not pretty, but I'll say this: like, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to hit it hard here. I played pickleball for the first time in about five months yesterday before the Super Bowl. I'm a little sore right now. I'm not gonna lie. How, little... how how did you feel like your game was? Like, what what did you do well? The first game was not great. I will say this: if you watch me play pickleball, and and anybody who I played against yesterday would attest to this. Um, I go hard, like I do. I, I cover a lot of ground with my with my <laughs> length, with my length. You know what that sounded like? That sounded like someone that that like doesn't play the sport and is trying to. <laughs> like, I go hard. I go hard. Yeah, I go hard playing pickleball. That's what you sounded like right there. You know, and and where we played yesterday, there's not a lot of room on the uh, beyond the baselines. That's a little scary, actually. So you're crashing in. You're trying to go back on some balls. And you're like crashing into a wall. It's a tennis court that they made into, you know, two pickleball courts. So you're so, like Jim Edmonds sprinting yeah, back towards the warning yes. track. I'm going to go against the wall, against and the wall. you don't know. Like one of the guys said, like you got to be careful. Man, you're right. I'm who, not. Who would have thought that you'd be the guy that's just leaving it all on the line? I leave it all on the, into on the walls. Line. Yeah, that's I go hard. Of, I go hard, Rob, because I got to prepare it. for when I play. Yeah. You. You've got to you've got to start doing some heavier cardio though. We can't be seeing like no definition in the arms. You've got to start doing like some. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing the sweatshirts. No, hey, but the deal is that it's got to be you're wearing the jersey like you're out there playing. So I I really look forward to that. I really do. I I saw where you tweeted that your Trey Kaufman red jersey has has arrived. So <laughs> even even in arrival of the jersey, disrespectful from Goodman. What a shocker. People loved show. it. People actually loved that. That was it. Was pretty good. It was I'm pretty sure good. they did. All right, sure let's get did. down to business here. Uh, Super Bowl was yesterday. Yeah. Um, good game. Well, good final six minutes of the fourth quarter in overtime. They were entertaining. Before that, it, it was like watching a Big Twelve game uh, this year. There wasn't a lot going on. It was kind of a grinder uh, yeah. prior to that. But uh, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to go through kind of our top. 10 overall storylines right now just like 10 of them they're not necessarily the 10 but they're 10 storylines that we're going to run through right now for you to kind of sum up what's happened if you've been uh hibernating get the uh, football prior. crowd caught up right yeah so uh, i'm gonna let you start i'm gonna let you start what's your kind of number one storyline so far for the season yeah, I, I think it's it's two teams have separated themselves from everybody else, and they both ha have a cool storyline built up with from within. You know, you've got UConn, who is trying to repeat and be the first team to do so in twenty years, uh, and boy, they they have looked the part. And I, I think that the coach Hurley deserves so much credit because they lost some real real talent there, and they still just look like a juggernaut. And then I, I think Purdue and Purdue's got the Virginia storyline going. Um, Edie has been dominant. Lance Jones has changed the vibe, I think, of the team. And their freshman guards have become sophomores. And Braden Smith is phenomenal. I mean, he just torched Indiana in their last game. Um, yeah, that both those two teams are, are 1A and 1B, however you want to rank them. And I think that they've separated themselves from everybody else. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that. I mean, they're, they're – and again, they're vastly – like, 
one end of the spectrum or the other going to the tournament, right? I mean, defending champs, that hasn't happened since Florida. And then you got Purdue trying to overcome, like, the ghost of last year that Virginia was able to do a few years ago and go from losing perhaps the, the worst loss in NCAA tournament history last year to trying to win the whole thing. So I, I love those storylines. I would agree. Uh, for me, it might be the Big 12, Rob. You know, the dominance of the Big 12. And I'm not sure it's quite as dominant as what people are saying it is. But you but know what depth, they did? The depth is insane. Like the they depth just... is great, and they did what they needed to do in the non-conference. Now, again, Iowa State, TCU, two teams that really didn't play anybody. But they killed teams. Them. They killed them, though. Correct. They took advantage of – I don't know if it's gaming the system. I don't think it was necessarily done. T.J. Otzenberger did that for that purpose. But, again, it worked. For, for those two teams, it worked, and that helped the overall league. BYU got off to a good start. Those three teams really help the league in a sense that there aren't any bad losses. And every win, it feels like, is like a good win, other than yeah. Oklahoma State, West Virginia, and even UCF hasn't been bad. I mean, they've been able to pick off some, some pretty good teams at, at home, um, obviously being Kansas, uh, and, and they just beat Oklahoma at home last week. So, uh, I think the the depth of this league is, you know, they're going to get 10, 10 teams in the NCAA tournament. Ten. I'm going to go to their their conference tournament, Rob. Just because that'll be, and that's a cool event anyway. Right. They, the Kansas City does a phenomenal job. If the weather is good yeah. and the right teams awesome. win, yeah. that is an amazing, amazing conference tournament. And I like it because I don't think Kansas and Houston are nearly as dominant as we thought they'd be this year. Yeah, they're closer Kansas. to the pack, right? Yeah, like there's not a big difference. So you could look at that as like nobody, if they won that tournament, anybody, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, TCU, Iowa State, any of those teams, you'd be like, okay, you know what? I'm not shocked if they right. end up winning that thing. So yep. I'll go Big 12 as, as my kind of biggest uh, takeaway and, and storyline. What else you got? Yeah, and the Big 12 is clearly the best league this year. And every night you've got a game where you're like, man, this is this is pretty good. Um, I'm going to go with there are some traditional powers and or even highly ranked teams coming into the season that have just not delivered. been good. You know, yeah. Michigan State is the first one. They, they're they picked fourth to start the year uh, nationally, and they just they're, – they're, they're okay. They'll make the tournament, I think. Um, but – they they are they have to win to make it. It's not like they are a foregone conclusion that they are going to make the NCAA tournament. Indiana is not going to make the NCAA tournament. They they just they have really struggled. Going to have to do a lot of work in the portal this off season. Um, and just to see, I think Indiana's overall. I don't. I mean, they they have talent. I just think the the roster construction is not good enough to win in today's college basketball. Michigan. Really struggled. They, I mean, the Doug McDaniel suspension, it's, they have some talent on that team, but it, it just, it's not been put together. They beat Wisconsin, looked like a drop in the pan. They were down 30 at Nebraska here over the weekend. Ohio State is in jeopardy of missing the NCAA tournament. Uh, Chris Holtman definitely needs to to win games here down the stretch uh, because the Ohio State fan base has not been, been happy with the way that's gone. Villanova hit the portal and did so in a big way. And they have not lived up to the expectation. UCLA, uh, <laughs> UCLA has been – they've showed some signs of life, though, haven't they? They've been a little bit better. Yeah, only because the Pac-12 stinks, but yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but, but they went international route, and that that has not uh, panned right. out for them. And Gonzaga. You know, Gonzaga was picked as a top 15 team, and they're going to have to do some work to, to make the NCAA tournament as well. So I, I just think when you think of some of the the big, big programs in college basketball, this year is, is – and while some of the Blue Bloods have kind of come back, th yeah. those those ones that I mentioned have have really struggled. I'll add a couple more, and, and they're a little different, but like Arkansas is not a Blue Blood, but we Pick expected – Pick though. Yeah, pick highly. Yeah, we expected Musselman to do some wonders this year, and he didn't. And then you've got another blue bloodish program that's just been bad for a couple of years in Louisville. Like, yeah. bad. And they're a little bit better this year. But but those are a couple more that I would say, like, add on. And, and you're right. There, there's a bunch. For me, I'm going to further expand on two of those 
in, in a huge storyline, which is Mark Few and Tom Izzo. And they both got streaks going, right? Izzo's got yeah. the longest active streaker going the NCAA tournament, 25 years. Mark Few's got every single year he's been a head coach. That's 24 straight years, Rob. And both are in jeopardy right now. Like, obviously, Gonzaga got the huge win over the weekend. Well, both Kentucky. teams did. I mean, both teams got both massive teams. wins to help both their cause. Yes. So, I think Michigan State, if the, the season ended today, would be in. And, and like in a, a, like 11 seed. I think Gonzaga still has to beat their final two games are at San Francisco at St. Mary's. Um, I think they got to beat, they got to win both of those to afford them to lose to St. Mary's in the WCC title game. That was Gonzaga's first quad one win of the year. Yes. That's, that's crazy. I mean, crazy. think about the quad one wins that Mark few has racked up in the non-conference over the last 10 years. I mean, yeah. they've just, they've gotten so many of them. Yeah, I just wonder if both those guys, uh, you know, again, we've talked about this a little bit. Few being without Tommy Lloyd has hurt him. And Tom Izzo, reluctance to go into the portal has hurt him. Because if if you give Michigan State one really good big right now, like, like a, a they got the three more player. wins. They got three more wins. Yeah, and and yes, I, I agree with that. But the, the thing with Michigan State that stood out to me is just the lack of consistency from everybody that's not named Tyson Walker. Oh, Malik okay. Hall is like an all-conference player one game, and the next player he takes four shots. Right. Next game he takes four shots. H Hogard has been up and down at times this year. Akins has been up and down. I mean, Tyson Walker is like the one constant. And you're right. Like, their bigs have just not been, you know, Sissoko, Cooper, Kohler, Xavier like, Booker. Cooper's a great backup. They're all good backups. Yeah, yeah right. They, they were backing up. But and, like, the thing is, it's, it's I think – really ramped up expectations is Xavier Booker is ranked like 10th, which how is he ranked 10th? I feel like that's Good a recruiting outside. service doing right. him a disservice. It's like okay. Anthony Bennett being the number one pick. He's, he's good. Like yeah. Anthony Bennett's not a bad basketball player. He should never have been the number one pick in the draft. Xavier Booker could be a good player. He is so not physical in a league where physicality is so important. And yeah, he's got some skill, but man, you just, it's going to be hard to play him against a lot of the bigs in the big 10 because they're just going to crush him. Yes. You know, but like everyone talked about, I'm like, oh, he'll be, the, he'll be the savior. He can because shoot. They he don't, the recruiting guys who do the rankings, Rob, are scared that he's going to eventually be an NBA all-star in 10 years. Because right? he does have the skill set. No, I, I get that. But man, you look like, like, what are you moron. recruiting on? What do you, you look like a moron when on? you rank him 10th? And I'm thinking of guys that were ranked 10th in prior classes. I'm like, well, Blake Griffin was like 20. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, James Harden was around eight, nine or 10. That, that guy doesn't look like those two, you know, that that's where it's now I do understand, but I do think that there's always an excuse. Like if I rank him 50th right now and I'm watching him play and he does become, let's say he becomes some stretch big in the NBA. That's just killing. You could point to like, yo, and I guess part of this is what are your rankings? What are you really ranking for? Are you ranking to say what he's going to be in 15 years? Or are you ranking to say what his impact is going to be? In college, and I guess those are two different things, right? Totally. But I do think that you could always say, well, look at how much he struggled. I knew he wasn't going to be ready physically for what was coming in college. Right. You need time to develop, right? Like some guys, it takes time. I mean, his body's not ready. You know, no. it was like I watched Khalil Ware a couple years ago in the AU circuit, and I, I said a similar thing. I'm like, he's not going to be ready as a freshman. Now, again, he hasn't done it for a good team this year, but Khalil Ware has been pretty darn good this year. No, right? he has. He, he has. hasn't been the issue. He, he probably is in the NBA. Uh, yes. He'll be a first-time so. pick. Yeah, you know, right. I, I would think. As you guys know by now, we've partnered with BetMGM this season. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 as we all get ready for the best month of the year, March madness if you haven't signed up for bet mgm yet you can use the bonus code field 150 and you will get 150 dollars in free bets on your first wager with bet mgm regardless of whether or not you win that first bet here's the best part all you need to do is deposit and bet five dollars of your hard-earned money this is how you make it work 
Download the BetMGM app and sign up using the bonus code FIELD150. That's FIELD150. Deposit at least $5 and place your first wager on any game. You will receive up to $150 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your bet. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD150 when you sign up. And remember, BetMGM is now available in one wallet in select states. As a New Jersey resident, this is super convenient when I have to go cover games in Philly or New York, which happens quite a bit. When you cross state borders, you just log into your existing account and fire away. You don't have to create a new account in each state. It's easy, it's simple, and it's clean. And most importantly, we have some fun stuff coming up for the conference tournaments and for the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens college hoops odds boost and my personal favorite a nice little parlay boost here and there so download the bet mgm app and sign up today all right next up what do you uh, got i i zach Eady's national player of the year back to back i don't think anybody is even close to challenging him uh which puts him in like you know the ralph sampson kareem um uh, I think those are the two guys that have, have done it. Maybe Bill Praise. Walton. Praise. Um, but we just don't get to have national player of the year type players come back. And because of the way the NBA has gone, we've gotten, you know, Hunter Dickinson is back. Edie is back. All these bigs, Armando Baycott is back. Klingon is back. All those guys come back because college is a good. Now, Klingon, I think, has a chance to be like a, a first round type. type. Player. Why? So why well, why do you, again, we talked about this briefly, but. Because why I think the NBA Edie values Klingon. Why are Edie and Klingon right now the exception to the rule of the big and right now that people are talking about them being potentially even lottery picks? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, rim protection, how do you guard and pick and roll? And, like, are, are you – can you – do you roll to the rim and finish? Like, there's there's just certain, I think, skill sets that NBA teams are going to value. Can you spread the floor? And not that those guys do. I mean, Edie made his first three. He banked in a three against Indiana. That was awesome. Um his stroke actually doesn't look bad. No, it's not no. like he shoots and you're like, man, that, that has no chance. Like right. he might be able to, can he be like a Brooke Lopez where all of a sudden that's, that's part of his game. Maybe. Yeah. I don't, I mean, it doesn't right. look awful. Nope. Uh, but I just think that there, there's some skills that those guys have in terms of if you can guard and pick and roll, if you can protect the rim. And I think Edie has been so much better defensively. That's, that's really helped his cause here. Uh, because they're, look, you're not going to early in your career and probably for most people always in your career, you're not getting many plays run for you. How do you fit around superstar players in the NBA? Because how, how do you impact games when you're not getting, and you're, you're a second a unit of, big, you're a yeah, second he, unit It's big. a lot of post touches because Purdue's going to play through him. How can you still impact the game when, when you're, you're playing through other people, but you can still have an impact. You know, that, that's, that's an important thing too. I think the other aspect to Klingon and Edie and why they should go this year is the draft sucks. The draft well, that's too. You know, the draft is just right. who's the number one pick? Uh, I know. Olivier Sar's brother, you know. <laughs> uh, like and again, he's overseas. He's talented, he's versatile, he defends, he's athletic, all that. But you know, there's just there's there's not a lot of high powered dudes, especially yep. over here in college. Uh, even really, I mean, if you look at Ron Holland in the G League, like what is he? You know, he he can't shoot. He can't shoot. He's a he's a big athletic kind of combo forward. Who, if he can't shoot, are you really taking him in the top five? I right. look for me, a guy that I would take in the top five now, Rob, is is Stephen Castle from UConn. He yeah. looks the part, man. Like I'm not sure. Again, he's going to be that guy immediately. But here's what I'll say. He's big athletic guard who can guard. He defends like a mf -er. and yep. he's big. He's strong. He's got great feel for the game, so he can play the point. He can be a big right. point in the NBA where they don't come after you, and his shot's gotten better. Like, what's the downside? Like, to me, why can't Stephen Castle – like, if he came back next year to UConn, I could see Stephen Castle averaging 18 – Honestly, if you put the ball in his hands full time and Tristan Newton's gone, you could see him averaging 18, eight rebounds, seven rebounds, and like five assists. Yeah. Like he could be no, player of the year. He won't. But what I'm saying is if he stayed one more year, I think he could be 
National Player of the Year and a top, maybe the number, well, number two pick behind Cooper Flag. Yep. So no, that's, me, that's totally fair. That's a guy I could see, like, I would take with upside. In this year's draft, I would take Stephen Castle uh, top five. All right. Uh, next up, uh, for me, Kentucky Wildcats. You know, got off to an unbelievable start. They were 12-3. and three. They're rolling. Everybody's talking about how they're the – you're talking about how they're the third team behind Purdue. Dude, and that, that has aged really poorly. But I will say <laughs> – You're not the only I, one. I did preface that after you kind of pulled the reins back. Yeah. And I looked at Ken Palm, and I'm like, wait, this team is yeah. 90th in defensive efficiency? That's not good. And that has been an issue. So I, I will say that it was an egregious statement. Normally, you're the one that make the crazy statement. I, I, I really regret doing it. I pulled it up. It was out of the Jeff Goodman playbook, and I regret it. But, yes, that I did say that. So They're now down to 124, by the way. That is wild, dude. Deficient in, in defensive. Oh, defensive. man. They're 4-4 four and four in their last eight. They've lost three straight at home. First time ever at Rupp Arena that they've lost three straight at home. The first time they've lost – Three straight at home since 1966 when the second leading scorer was Pat Riley on the team. How about that? He averaged about 17 points a game. Uh, insane. Insane right now. Um, before we move on to the next one, well, we can get to that later. Well, no, we'll get to it now. Let's 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 touch on Calipari's <laughs> great, future. Great hosting right here. Wait, wait host. Yeah. Well, let, let's touch on that now since we're already we're already there. I've said this. I've said it doesn't really matter what Kentucky does in the regular season, Rob. Okay, whether they're tell a that to the Kentucky team. fans that are losing their minds and want Calipari fired. And that's, I get it. I get it. Do not agree with that. Here's what I'll say. Ultimately, now again, do I believe in their defense? Hell no. Hell no. As bad as their guards are, but that, Jeff, you could say this for every team. If you get in the tournament and make a run, it yeah. it absolves all sins. Yeah. It's not like that's a Kentucky thing. That's an everybody thing. But how many Cal, teams? Look at, in a couple years ago, where they were borderline not getting in, make the Sweet 16, yep. good year, right? Yeah, like, I mean, everyone it, looked at that at the end of the season, like, wow, we really right. turned it on at the end. Great year. Yeah, I agree. I think Calipari even more so because they haven't – it's Kentucky and they haven't done anything in the tournament in so yeah, long. no, I, I agree with that. So, but I think everybody is, is sort of under that same – You're process. right. You're right. I, I would say this. Here, here's my question, my pointed question to you that you can't squirm out of. John Calipari is owed $33 million after this year. Yeah. If they lost, let's say now they're dropping down like an eight, nine. Okay. They're probably going to like today, if the season ended, they're probably that's on the a talented eight, eight. That's a scary eight, nine for a one seed because of the way they score. And they're correct. Talent. Like if you're Purdue, you know, like you don't want to <laughs> you get, you're like, this is supposed to be a team right. we see in the elite right. eight. If Cal loses in the second round, let's say he wins his first round matchup. Okay, and they lose in the second round. Now, again, now they're going to have a little less expectations on them because their seed is going to be lower than it was if you're like a two seed and you lose. I actually yeah. think it's a little bit different because, again, fans now are like they're not going to expect quite as much as they did a month ago. They're thinking Final Four. Now they're thinking, all right, can we get to the second weekend? And then who knows? My question to you is if he doesn't get to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament, would you make a move on John Calipari? Is it time? Who's he got coming in recruiting wise? What's his class look like? Uh, they, I mean, they got good players again, but but you're not winning with freshmen. No, no, I know, I know, I know. That's ultimately uh, the the problem is. But you're not firing a guy if he's got like the number one class in the country coming in. Is my point. Like if you've got that'll like, be every year, but that'll be every year. I mean, it's it's not like they don't get now. They missed out on Cooper Flag. They got this kid, Jaden Quintanitz, who I saw. He's a big, strong, like he's young for his his eight for his grade, but but he he looks like Cliff Alexander look. Like he looks like a like a man. So yeah, you, you got him. He's ranked seventh in the in the country. He's talented, no doubt. Uh you've got some other good player. You got Billy Richmond. A wing out of Camden, New Jersey. The can you know the uh, the World Wide West connection there probably helps in Camden. Um, Boogie Flan, who they beat out, they beat Indiana for. He's a top twenty five yeah. kid. You know they, they got. I mean, here's the crazy part. 
So they've got five, it looks like, five top 75 high school players coming in again. And it's like, dude, like, why? Why are you doing this again with high school kids? Yeah, why not Why not just go to the portal? I mean, that's yes. – he can get whoever. They have Correct. the money to get whoever. Right. Um. God, so they lose do, in the second round? Yeah, do you just think it's time? Like, I'm not no, – I mean, I can see where he could almost be like, you know what, this has been a great run. Yeah. But this is not, you know, I, I can go somewhere else and, and they'll appreciate kind of <laughs> what I'm bringing to the table. I, maybe. I mean, yeah, if they lose in the second round, I could see where it's maybe time. Um, but it's just hard for me to think that, like, John Calipari, who has been a titan of this industry, could be a guy where the fan base of Kentucky is like, you know what? We're sick of this. That's wild. Yeah. That's truly wild. But, if but I do I, I do agree. Weekend. Like the, res, the results have not been good enough for, right. for their program. Right. And, you know, that's – that's yeah. I, and, again, I this is it. a guy that rose the expectations to where is, they felt like they were going to the Final Four and they almost were – No, and he's a he's a product of, of his, his own success, right. right? Like this is a product of him being so successful yeah. early. Um, let's move over to the other Blue Blood, though. Go ahead. The Blue Blood that's going the other direction. Yeah. North Carolina. Yeah. But last year, they were talking about firing Hubert Davis after uh, starting the year ranked number one in the country and not making the NCAA tournament. Well, they, they've reloaded. You know, Caleb Love moves on to Arizona, which has seemed to work out for, for him and them. R.J. Davis has been awesome. The transfers have been impactful with Harrison Ingram and uh, my man from Notre Dame. Uh, Cormac. And Cormac Ryan. Uh yeah, he's done a great job, and they they look like a team that can make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. So they're kind of the polar opposite of of Kentucky. Uh, the which crazy, is crazy part, Rob. It's amazing though. With the portal, things can change in a hurry. Right. Like, yes, yeah. you might lose guys in a hurry, but you can also gain people in a hurry. Yep. And it's not like the old days where when you look at a team's roster and you're like, man, this could take three or four years for us right. to to fix this. You can fix stuff in one year. Yeah, go good or bad in a year, but things yeah. can change. Than so true. Hurry now, you know, the crazy part is think about this December 16th, Kentucky played North Carolina. Um, I think it was in Charlotte, right? And CBS sports classic or Atlanta. I can't remember where that game was, yeah. but uh, you know, Kentucky ends up winning that game. Everybody, you know, is kind of worried a little bit about North Carolina and then they go on their run and they've been unbelievable defensively. Um, and Hubert. Yeah. I was one of the people that questioned whether he was right for that job. And last year, you know, a lot of people were with me. They were like, you know, this is a this is a crazy shit show. He didn't have him mentally ready as much as anything. You know, you know, Caleb Love's situation was ugly. Now they've got great chemistry. They've let R.J. Davis be R.J. Davis, let him rock. And to be honest, he's way more efficient. You'd much rather, wouldn't you? Like if it's somebody taking a final shot, You'd much rather have R.J. Davis taking it than Caleb Love taking it. I would. I mean, I guess with his efficiency, yeah. Caleb Love. Although Caleb Love has made some some big shots. In oh, career. he does. It just – his efficiency isn't the same as R.J. Davis's. His ability to give up the ball is yeah. different to his teammates with the game on the line. To, That's make, to make the right play. Correct. That's the difference. Caleb – you know, Caleb he, Love was shooting it regardless. He he'd take a thirty footer. He'll take a right. fifteen footer. Right. Like it's going up. Whereas yes. I think R.J. Davis is more of, I'll take what the defense is giving me and yep. do what I'm supposed to do. Yep. Big news, guys! I am thrilled to announce that we have partnered with Autograph, a company founded by the goat himself, Tom Brady. The Autograph fandom app gives you access to the best college hoops content fan contests, and exclusive rewards like discounted tickets, all for doing the things that diehard fans like you already do, following your favorite team in the news and listening to podcasts just like this one. When Tom, and yes, I am calling him Tom, we're on a first name basis these days, co-founded Autograph, he had one mission in mind, change the fan experience for the better. It works like this. You get all of your college hoops content you want in one place you get articles from your favorite writers pods from your favorite hosts contests from your favorite creators all on the feeds and the sites that you already enjoy but instead of having to go to all these different places it all comes to you in one spot the autograph fandom app but here's the best part the more content that you consume the higher you rank in the app 
As you consider the level up in status on the app, you can unlock unique rewards curated exclusively for you. So download the free autograph app in the app store and use the referral code F68, that's F68, or tap in at the link in the description below or in the podcast app of your choosing to start earning points for doing something as normal as listening to this very podcast. It really is that simple. All right, my next one, uh, Big 12 is the best league in America. Mountain West has been the most surprising league in America, and they're probably going to get five teams in the NCAA tournament. San Diego State isn't quite as good as what we thought they'd be, but you know what? Utah State has been probably the biggest surprise in the entire country. Danny Sprinkle comes over from Montana State and uh, brings a couple dudes with him, Great Osborne being one of them, and they're locked in. New Mexico's back. Now, again, New Mexico is going to be interesting because they got three really tough games coming up, two road games, and they've lost two straight at the pit. So they can ill afford to lose three in a row here. That would put them right on the bubble. But as of today, um, those three in good shape. Colorado State's in good shape. They've won four in a row now. Boise and Nevada both have a chance. I think one of those two gets in at the end of the day. So the Mountain West, look look at – they're probably going to get five in, especially with the fact that the Pac-12 has been so god-awful this year, Rob. Yeah, no, it, it definitely has. Um no, I like that. Mountain West having a great year. Uh, we talked about how the portal can like flip your team and do so overnight. Like it can be one season to the next. And I guess when you're talking about guys that have made an impact for good, you know, I just I have a list of players here who have done that. And Dalton Connect, how is that dude not recruited highly <laughs> coming out of? You look at him now and you're like, dude, this guy, he looks like an NBA player. Caleb Love, Cam Spencer at UConn. Uh, Lance Jones at Purdue, Marcus Damask at Illinois, Hunter Dickinson, obviously. He he was the number one uh, transfer in the portal. He goes from Michigan to Kansas. He's really helped the Jayhawks. Quincy Oliveri has been great at Xavier. A.J. Storr, even if maybe there's been some recent struggles for Wisconsin, has kind of given them a different dynamic, you could say. Harrison Ingram at North Carolina, L.J. Cryer, going from Big 12 team to Big 12 team from Baylor to Houston. Uh, David Jones has scored a ton of points. I know Memphis hasn't been nearly as good, but he's been really impactful. And you mentioned great Osborne at, mm-hmm. uh, at Utah state. So just, you look at some of those names and how those guys have impacted teams that are really, really good in college hoops or had massive breakout years. It's uh, the game has totally changed from when I played, you know, like you knew who you were playing against every year and you knew who was going to be on your team. And now you, you don't, but you can see how just one guy can, can make such a difference for a lot of really good teams in college hoops. Um, I'm going to try to find this stat. I, I had it for transfers compared to. Um, all right. So here's the stat. The top 20 uh, ranked freshmen so far this year have averaged about 21 minutes a game and eight, uh, 8.7 points, three rebounds, two assists a game. Okay. So again, top 20 freshmen ranked. By 24-7, the the composite thing. 21 minutes, almost nine points, three rebounds, two assists. The top 20 ranked transfers this season, 31 minutes, 14 and a half points, five rebounds, three assists. So That stat will be interesting to see. When COVID is over, the COVID fifth years are over. I think that will change, but until then, that's yeah. going to be the norm. Well, again, it's a combination. Well, of the, not, maybe not change, change, but it will be easier for freshmen. It'll get, play. it'll get closer. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll absolutely. You'll see more freshmen impacting, uh, impacting. But right now, yeah, you got guys that have played. This is their fifth year of college basketball. Uh, you know what that felt like. Listen, dude, I played the amount of games. Less than most four-year players. You make it sound like I played 185 games. You make it. That's the you, goal. People like you have pushed this narrative that yeah. is false. Yeah, I know. I know. And, you, and you're happy about it. That's I the am. thing. You're you're happy that you've spread this lie. Yes. You know, it's. Because like a lot of people know. Honestly, it was so fun. It was so fun playing after not playing basketball for 16 months on <laughs> one leg. That was so enjoyable for me. You know, what a great experience. If I could do it again, I'd pray that maybe both legs would have been shitty. Wouldn't that have been great? <laughs> the best thing now, though, people coming up to, like, people now, you know, they they look at you and they think, like, nobody played longer than Robbie Hill. No, me, 
uh my man from kansas perry ellis yeah. he's in there uh who else greg paulus throw him in there yep. he played football for a season shit he did. He did. That like, was amazing. That's amazing. The that. fact that he was able to go from literally playing point guard at Duke to being like, you know what? I'll just be the starting quarterback at Syracuse. <laughs> I haven't played football since high school. Same. Yeah, insane. me and Perry, I feel like, are, are two of the gold standards for people that played forever. But, you know, I really didn't play that many games. I just I kept getting hurt. You just looked old. You looked oh, with, the, with the knee brace, the back brace. Yeah, I should have. I look cool. at uh, guys now, and you've got to cover the the knee brace. If you're going to wear the big John Joy <laughs> that like the offensive linemen have to wear, the quarterbacks wear on their plant leg. I wish I had a sleeve to go over it. It looks so much better. So much better. You look so old. You look like you I remember YMCA. No, I know. I remember I was I was doing my rehab with Tim Grover, which is actually crazy. So I did my second ACL rehab with Grover every day in Chicago. I drove up here, and. Uh, he actually made me throw up for the only time I've ever thrown up due to exercise the first day. Now I hadn't done oh. shit in like 14. He had first me do three day he made you throw up? I thought we were going to, I was going to come in yeah. and he's going to like take my height and weight. I mean, I'm out of shape like crazy because I haven't been able to do anything. Right. And my second rehab, they really took it slow. So, uh, yeah, I go in there. I'm thinking I'm taking height and weight. We'll maybe do some light <clears throat> ease you in type stuff. Tim has me do three exercises. First one. Leg press, single leg, not heavy weight, three sets of 15, four seconds up, four seconds down. Yeah. So you're talking about like yeah. incredible in like fatigue due to lack of muscle endurance, right? Like I so I get through that and I'm like, holy shit. He <laughs> has a, this machine. This gym in Chicago is incredible. Now it's a community center. The combine used to be there. Attack was and you could get your hair cut. You could get your car detailed. This place was amazing. It was way over the top, and that's why it failed, I think. It's also huge. Your car but detailed. Second, second exercise. He puts me on this air compressor machine where you kind of get, like, harnessed in, and it simulates, like, running with your legs where you're, like, kicking, but you're kind of, like, harnessed in. Do 130 reps. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> 130, what? Then after I do that, and it, I had to stop a couple of times. I'm like, Tim Grover has worked out Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and Dwayne Wade, and he probably thinks that I am the biggest wimp in the world. Because I'm like dying. Yeah. I'm truly dying. Yeah. Third exercise. Puts me on this octagon slide board. Most of those <laughs> slide boards are just like back and forth. This one was multi-plane, so you could go like <laughs> diagonally. You could, And he just has me doing a bunch. And I'm like, Tim, I, I have to stop. I'm going to throw up. So I go over to the trash can and I'm like blacking out with my eye. I'm like, I'm like dying. And he, I, <laughs> he literally, I remember he brings me a, a, a new, like a protein shake to like, just revamp some of what I've lost. Cause I'm like literally in a bad place in the corner. And he's like, all right, great job today. I'll see you tomorrow. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, what? And uh, like, he Tim, I don't want to come back. I, I didn't want to. And he told me later on in the summer, he goes, I was just seeing if you quit. All really? I wanted to see is if you were wasting my time. Wow. And he's like, you weren't. So, you know, and it never was as hard as that. Although on the last day, he made me do some crazy stuff to prove to myself that my knee was healthy. But the point of that story was that he told me at one point, because I was going to have to wear the brace due to the doctor. And he's like, hey, you know, Chris Bosch wears this. And uh, I was like, really? And he had a sleeve over it. And I was like, why does he wear it? <laughs> oh, you he know. Wear that. And he basically just said, because he's soft. <laughs> That's Did like, he? wait, he's soft. He's he's one of the best centers in the NBA. Uh, but yeah, my first day with Tim Grover was insane. All right, let's move on to uh, you. Actually, saw a uh, a game that wasn't a Big Ten game this weekend. Yeah, it was really enjoyable. It I'm really sure enjoyable. it was. You work with Tim Brando, who yeah. actually seemed like he was excited to work with you. I don't know if he was. You didn't think or he, not. You didn't think he would be. You thought he'd be he'd be depressed about it. Yeah, I just I didn't know he'd know who you were. He was like, I've worked with Vitel and I've worked with uh, yeah. you know all, some of these icons of broadcasting, and now I have to work with this bum. Correct. Uh, Correct. No, it was a good game too. I mean, the the crowd was great. That Synthesis Center is is a really good venue. I I played there in college, and I've I've seen games there. Um, but I, Creighton, man, Creighton Xavier, Creighton Xavier was a game. Yeah, I think Creighton has a chance. You know, they've had some slip ups here. They're not very deep, but I think in the tournament that that's not like necessarily a terrible thing they need mason miller played really well at the four he gave them great minutes yeah. and if that happens man now they're only playing really six you could argue seven trout got a little bit of time for creighton but you know between 
Shireman, who is a beast. Yeah. He is good. And he didn't even shoot it well, but he he still played. He does really everything. Well. He does everything. He does. He does. And the way he runs off screens, I really like watching him play. Steven Ashworth seems like he's coming on. Um, uh, and he did a pretty good job on Quincy Oliveri, who's been one of the better yeah. transfers in college hoops this year. Um, Kalkbrenner had a contest at the rim that is like if you're defining verticality and you're talking about what would be the gold standard of how to teach this with his frame and length. It was amazing. Desmond Claw went up for this layup. And it was, I mean, Desmond claw has got some real athleticism. He's got a body. And Kalkbrenner was like purely vertical, hands almost going backwards, which is like crazy. And the contest. That's what he I said, does. I, but I that's what he does all the time. Game, and I said to him, like, Coach, that was, that was, inc- and what a nerd thing to say. Like, wow, that verticality was amazing. And he was like, dude, this is what he does. He, and like you said, this, this is him. Like he, he oh is God. doing that. Um, but yeah, I I really like their team. I think uh I think they could make a run. I mean, they almost, they were knocking on the door of the final four last year. And I, I think are you that, worried? Okay, so here here's my you know, I'll push back. Can Ashworth more. be that four score? Well, that's one and, thing. And Mason that's Miller give thing. them things at the four. He's small. Ashworth is tiny. Yeah. And defensively, and it, it ties back in ties back into me on their defense. Now I know and they, they were much well. better defensively, and, and Xavier can they'll play fast. Um, you know, like they'll 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 do that. Trey Alexander, you know, he's he's a really we haven't mentioned him. He's a really good player. Yep. Um they've got to be better defensively than they have been the last four games coming into Xavier, where it was like all of a sudden they're scoring 95 and losing. You know, like the, the Providence game was pretty high level overtime, so the, the numbers get inflated a little bit. Um Butler at home, you know, that, that was in regulation, I think. It was, where they, it was like 99, 98. You know, that that's a concern. And you're right. A small point guard when you, you're dealing with size can be concerning. They maybe can get creative with Trey Alexander, who is six four, and but then you're also giving up some size at other positions. So if, if Steven Ashworth's guarding the two or the three. Um, but I you know, Ashworth really he he's pesky, he'll chase you off screens, he he gets under you, but yeah, at six one, um, that, that could be a question. Defense has to be better, Mason Miller has to play well, but I like Creighton, and I, they are. I'll never ever complain about watching a Gray McDermott coach Creighton team because oh. it will be fun. And it's amazing their fast break points. They they're in like the two thirties because they right. play fast. You'd think it'd be more. Yep. But you know, they they can shoot it. They don't hesitate to shoot it. And a sneaky thing about Creighton is that they, even though they shoot a ton of threes, they're highly efficient from two. And their two point defense has been good all year, too. I mean, they're like third nationally in two point field goal percentage. They really took advantage of, of Xavier's lack of of size. Uh, yeah, and Sean Miller has done an awesome job. You yeah. lose Fremantle, you lose Hunter yeah. to those injuries, and Jerome Hunter just tore his Achilles, which is just awful. Yeah, um, that's really sad. He's been dealing with other stuff, and yeah, um, but he's playing a bunch of freshmen. He's playing a bunch of transfers, and they have a chance to make the tournament. Now they've got to win some games here. Uh, and that was a missed opportunity for Xavier on their home court quad one game, you know, that, and they, they could have, and that, well, I mean, Creighton really outplayed him for a lot of that second half. It was just Xavier did make a run to get back in it. Um, but I like what Sean's done. He he can really coach. Uh, you know, I kind of like Creighton too, like as much as most other teams in that second tier, because again, you've got experience, you've got enough shooters You've got size on the wings. You've got multiple guys who can make plays and have the ball in their hands. Um, the one, the depth, the four-man Mason Miller is like the X factor for me. He's got to make open threes. And then I just feel like they put too much pressure on Kulk Brenner defensively. Those yeah, other- they do. I oh. mean, he they funnel a lot to him, and he's he's got to stay out of foul trouble because you look at who's behind he does. him. And it's like, you know, it's just not the same. Yep. yep. There is nothing in sports better than the heart of the college basketball season, which is why I need to tell you guys about our partners over at Rhythm. If you're into sports betting, you need Rhythm, the place for data-backed props and picks. For those that are unfamiliar, Rhythm, spelled R-I-T-H-M-M, is the go-to mobile app for player props and game picks. Backed by AI predictive models, Rhythm helps you make smarter and faster betting decisions across all sports, but particularly college hoops, where there are as many as 150 games a day during conference play. 
many of which have softer lines at BetMGM than you'll find in the NFL or the NBA. With Rhythm, you get data-backed picks for every Division I game every day. Users get free picks daily with the ability to upgrade to unlimited access. And for those of you already using modeling, you can build custom sports betting models within the Rhythm app itself. I am a Rhythm user, and I found that I've been a better better when I focus on lines where my gut and Rhythm's modeling are aligned. When I think UConn can cover on the road against Butler and Rhythm backs that up, we fire. But Rhythm also helps lead you to plays that you didn't know you needed to make. Like, for example, when the data says bet the over in UMass Lowell versus New Hampshire because you have a 61% edge on that line, you bet the over and you bink. So if you want to increase your edge and win more bets, go to the link in the description below and download Rhythm today. That's R-I-T-H-M-M, the place for data-backed props and picks. Uh, all right. Before we go, I have to get your take on this. Like, because a lot of people are asking me this. What the hell is going on at Wisconsin? Yeah, it's a... Uh... That's interesting. I, I really thought that they were, and they, look, they, this could still turn around. They're there now. I'm shocked that they've lost at Michigan. Rutgers is playing better. Rutgers always plays hard, um, but to give up that many points to an offense that just has not been able to score. Yeah. Uh, defensively, there have been some red flags. I'd say all year long, but their offense was able to mask those red flags, and now all of a sudden their offense has kind of gone in the tank. Yeah, you know AJ Store is talented, and he gives them a, a dimension that they haven't had. But his shot selection gets him in trouble. You know, he takes some bad shots. Five of fourteen at Rutgers again. There's there have been a lot of games in a row now. I think it was four of fifteen against Purdue. He's had I think another game recently where it's like you're just not efficient on really high volume. Tyler Wall was great against Purdue. He was kind of a non-factor. Um, you know, in, in the loss at Rutgers, Stephen Crowell, the double has kind of taken his aggressiveness away. Haven't gotten nearly the production outside of Wall in the Purdue game from that front court. And then on top of that, their three point shooting has gone in the tank. Yeah. I mean, and that's something that they were doing pretty well early in the season. So, yeah, there's a lot of things. I, I just, boy, it's going to be interesting. Can they kind of get this thing back on the rails? Because right now it feels like this is spiraling. You know, this is. Four in a row. And look, is there a shame in losing at Nebraska where they have been phenomenal? No. It's but you had an 18-point lead. It's how they yeah. lost. No shame in losing to Purdue at home. You're right there. Yeah. Uh, the Michigan game was shocking. Michigan has been so bad. Michigan and, and Rutgers together. And Rutgers. I know and they're road games, games. And road games can be hard, but you've got to win those if you want to be a legitimate you know, contender. And that's, did that's we ever really buy in? Like, were we ever completely bought in, even when Wisconsin two weeks ago was ranked six in the country? Did you yeah. ever buy into the fact that, like, they had a, a Final Four run in them? I just thought that Store gave them something that they hadn't had. And I thought they were shooting it around him. Yeah. The defense was concerning. I, I will I will give you that. But I, I did think they were good. I, I did. I, I, I thought mean, they, that their I good, thought their good. depth. I mean, John Blackwell didn't play at Rutgers. He was hurt. Yeah. But he had had a great freshman year. He's kind of cooled off. You have a season coming off the bench. I'm like this was. I was all freshman team last year, and he hardly plays. But what a weapon, you know. Um. Yeah, I I, I thought they were pretty good. Now six in the country, good maybe not. Right. But I I really did think that they had a chance to. I I I'm doing the Purdue Wisconsin game last game of the year. And my thought two weeks ago was like, man, that could be huge. And now it's yes. like this probably it's not going to matter, you know. No, it's Purdue and everybody else in this league. Yeah. And that's the one thing I'll say is like the the talent level from Wisconsin to Ohio State to Indiana, like to Maryland, it's not that different, Rob. No, I mean right? I, I think Wisconsin's more talent or more well balanced. I think Wisconsin's a, a better put together team. Yep. Agreed. And I think they're more talented than, the, than those others, but it's not like they're way more talented. No, Indiana, Indiana, Indiana has a lot of talent in their front court. If you their throw those is... four teams in the in a hat, and I just threw four out there because Illinois to me is at a probably a different level. Illinois, yeah, they're with they're Shannon, second. they're the second, they're the second best team, talent wise, no doubt. <laughs> After that, like you can throw a bunch of those teams in a hat, and and the talent level isn't that different, especially the four I just mentioned. 
I mean, it's not like you, you get afford it for people honestly come up and rank them four different ways as far yeah, as, but I think that like those other teams have deficiencies like Indiana's guard play outside of Trey Galloway, not nope. good enough. Nope. Not good enough. And especially when Xavier Johnson is, is injured, oh. you know, yep. and he wasn't playing great by any means. Maryland has no shooting. Right. Like it's not uncommon for Maryland to go two of 19 from three. Yep. And even though Jameer Young is awesome and Julian Reese has been really good, when you can just sag off everybody else and dare them to shoot, it's you're, you're it's going to be really hard. Who was the third team you mentioned? Ohio State? Yep. You know, Ohio State, I honestly, you know, I, I actually like some of their talent. I just think that, you know, Roddy Gale's decision-making has not been great. And they're they've been too up and down. Like they're just even though Battle has they're shot big. Jamison Battle has done exactly what they needed him to do. But Bruce Thornton has been up and down. Roddy Gale's been really up and down. And they're and Zed Key and Felix Akpara just don't give him enough. No, no. That's that's part of the problem. Is that Key and Akpara, you thought you'd well, get Key, a dominant defensive player out of Akpara. You haven't. Zed Key and has Key it. could score, but like Key lost all this weight. And I hate to say this because I I know for a fact how hard he must have worked. Yeah. Because he looks He's so skinny, yeah. But I think it's maybe affected him, yeah. In a way where now you don't move anybody, right? You know, it's I respect the hell out of a kid that's going to work that hard, but I just think that him losing so much of his mass. And look, was there would, would there have been a way for him to get in better shape, but retain a lot of the what was moving people? I would think so, maybe. But man, maybe. I I don't know that that's that's hurt him. I feel like they just. I don't know. I still feel like Wisconsin is clearly ahead of those teams. I, I don't think that they're... By the way, I didn't put Michigan State in that group, too. And and I think you could throw them in their talent level in the same, you know, the five teams now that I that I mentioned. So yeah, I, I'd put them with Wisconsin where I think that they are a notch above the other. They probably are. Talent-wise, they probably are. You know, again, you, you've got... But, but again, all I'm saying is there's not a ton of disparity between the Big Ten from Team 3 to Team no. 10. Purdue and Illinois are way more talented than everybody. Way else. more talented, way more talented, and 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 again, you know, we'll see with Illinois. Like we'll see here. Like they they have a chance with with Shannon, and and it was a big game for Shannon uh, yeah. to me to go on the road and score twenty eight in a environment that was getting after him because everywhere yeah. he's going to go, he's going to deal with that. And I thought while they didn't win, their I, late game execution, Jeff, is terrible. Yeah, and because they don't have a point late. guard. And they it don't has have been a point for like a while here. They they just the Nebraska game was awful the way they closed it. I I was I didn't even get to watch the game. I was in the in my rental car driving to the airport, and I looked at the score when I stopped for gas. I'm like, wow, Illinois is up six, and I swear I checked it like four minutes later, and they were down five. Yeah. I'm like, what happened? You know, like that. They just it's really hard to me uh, to win close games consistently when you don't have. A, a good point guard they couldn't guard i mean they couldn't they couldn't get stops and i i think that michigan state was just searching out matchups um i will say coleman hawkins got called for the, maybe the worst technical foul of the year yes it was all that's a but, that's an awful but it's a rep foul. tech it's it's because who he's been yeah. especially i think he's gotten a little bit more well, I thought in the in, he, at the at Purdue, I thought he could have gotten three techs. There's yeah. been games where I've I felt like he has deserved to get technical fouls. This was and, and yelling boom to a fan is not Stupid. one of them. Right. Even if he says something else to the fan, it's like he's not on the court. And it was one unless it's something so egregious, you know, like I, yeah. I just I don't like that technical foul. It's terrible. And then they hit Jay Nakins with basically the same thing. He was talking to the bench though. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I th I mean, it might have been behind the bench, but I think it was, it was either the bench or right behind it. Whatever the case, you know what? Like, here's my take. Now the problem is you've got refs. We're in mid February. They've been working all year. They haven't had days off. They're honestly they don't have the patience they had back in November they, December. They've heard enough as well, right? Right. Like they're just like yeah. I think they've got quick triggers here. No, and, and again, it's something that needs to change. Uh, we could talk about it at a later date of how you change it again. The ref I, symposium coming in May. Yeah. No, I want to do it. I want to do it. I think we should we should get all these these guys on and actually talk about how to improve uh, officiating going forward next year. All you right, think they can? Can they? Before we can yeah. they be honest though? I mean, you you're part of, like you got to you probably got to get a couple that are out. 
that are out. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. Because, I mean, you it's know? hard because you're getting hired by these leagues, and, and if you're bashing You know who will be honest? Them. You know who will be honest? Ted Valentine. Well, yeah, he will. Of course he will. So, <laughs> you get Teddy. You get a couple other guys that maybe are recently retired, got out. You get a couple, you know, commission uh, – uh, Guys that run league, uh, yeah, uh, deals. So, who well, knows? Could, yeah, that's that's it's worth a true. shot. It's worth a shot. I agree. Right. Uh, thanks for joining us, Goodman and Hummel Pod. Uh, have a great week. Uh, we're here. We're, we're going to try to do every Mondays. That's if you haven't noticed by now. We're, that's kind of Robbie's schedule right now. So hopefully we can continue this and uh, recap kind of crazy weekends. We got eight weeks from today. Rob is a national title game. So crazy. Uh, it is crazy. It is crazy. Best time of year here coming forward for college hoops, uh, meaningful games, um, conference tournaments start in like, I don't know, like three weeks. It's crazy. That's wild. Crazy. This year has, well, it feels like it's been a grind. It's actually flying by. <laughs> yeah, well, because you're not used to working this hard. So for you, it's flipping it from a summer of uh, paradise to actually having to work for about five months. Ah, in the summer year. of paradise. The summer wow. of paradise. We'll end with that. We'll end with that. The summer right. of paradise. See you next week. Home. Good minute, humble pod. Good minute, humble podcast. And we got Robbie Humble. I'd known you since you were a kid. I could blow my knee out, both knees, and still kick your ass. <laughs> we're trying to find the Robbie Humble statue. I wanted to kill you. <laughs>